this is your initial contact. This is your loading response. Now what you want to do is you want to take the other side leg and take a step. While you're taking the step on the other side, this leg is on one leg, right? That one leg is single limb stance and is divided into two phases. One is your mid stance and another one is your terminal stance. Now this guy right here is in loading response and this guy right here is in mid stance, right? In mid stance, the hip is zero degrees. The hip is completely neutral because it's the transition of the pelvis. It's the transition of the other leg, which is going forward. This leg is completely fixed with the ground. The knee has gotten straightened up again, but the tibia has moved a slightly forward with the foot fixed with the floor. Try to do it. Try to take one step backwards, one step forward, one step backwards, one step forward. You'll see the momentum in the hip joint. You'll see the momentum at the ankle joint as well. The movement, this is basically ankle strategy if you, have, if you remember uh, second lecture of the neuro. What is ankle strategy? When the whole body as a unit moves on the ankle is your ankle strategy. There's a transition of the movement specifically at the ankle joint because the whole body has moved. You see the other leg moved into the air and gotten forward. But the whole body has moved on the ankle joint. The range of motion at the ankle joint is dorsiflexion 5 degrees. Now, some of you who does not know the concept of the closed chain activities, I'm sure all of you know it, but for some of you, it's very hard to visualize it. Um, and I'm assuming that you're standing right now. From loading response, go to the single limb stance. Keep the other leg on the side, right? And try to squat down. When you squat down, if this is your foot, this is your knee, this is your femur right? This is how you squat down, where you have slight knee flexion and where you have slight anterior translation of the tibia over the foot. If, if it still doesn't make sense, just hold on. Uh, okay, guys. All right. Hi, this is me again. Anytime you feel like, Ravneet, we don't need so many examples. Ravneet, we understood the point. Ravneet, yeah, you made your point. Let's move on. Feel free to has feel free to let me know because I don't want to keep saying one thing in different ways and waste your time. I'm assuming, and what I've heard from last so many years, that gate is very complicated. So I try to bring a lot of examples. So please, your feedback is really important at this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain you the closed chain activity of the foot the reason i keep asking you guys because i sometimes i feel anxious to be honest i feel like maybe i'm talking too much maybe uh, uh i've made my point right uh sometimes i feel like uh, no i need to say it again because i've i've heard these questions before i've heard these i've heard i've heard people struggling with these concepts so that just i'm just delivering the the whole lecture according to what i perceive from people. So that's why I give you the whole liberty to stop me to ask and stuff like that. All right. So this is the leg right here. Okay. Let's say you're sitting in a chair. So imagine this hand is my chair, right? And you're sitting in a high sitting position. Your foot is hanging down. If you want to do the dorsiflexion, what you'll do is you'll move the foot like this. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. And this is open chain, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. But if you want to do dorsiflexion and plantar flexion in closed chain, what you'll do, you'll stand up and you raise your heel up and that's your plantar flexion. If you squat down, that's your dorsiflexion. If you raise your heels up, I hope you're doing it. That's your plantar flexion. So when you raise your heels up, what do you notice at the uh, uh, at the knee joint? They're always extended. So make a point. It's very important. During closed chain, 
every time you go into plant reflection, you'll have knee extension. All right. And anytime you go into closed chain dorsiflexion, you'll have knee flexion. Very, very, very important concept. And if you if you can retain it, it'll go, it'll take you to a different level of understanding the concepts in the prosthetic and orthotic gait also. So today we are trying to just build a foundation of the whole gait thing. Everyone are okay with the example, plantar flexion, closed chain, dorsiflexion, closed chain. So basically what we are trying to do here is that every time you're moving your leg over the foot and if you're going forward, it's your dorsiflexion. So there's five degrees dorsiflexion here. The knee is almost straight. Remember what I said? The knee is never al almost straight. Knee is always zero to five degrees flexed. The hip is neutral. Zero degrees range of motion at the hip joint. The muscles that are very active at the hip joint are hip abductors. Because now when you're standing on one leg, you notice that your pelvis is dropping down. But in order to maintain that pelvic integrity, the leg which is touching down, the hip abductors are keeping the pelvis in the centered position. Right? Weakness of the hip abductors on this side will lead to pelvic drop on the neighbor's opposite side. So hip abductors are working very strong here. Eccentrically, remember when we said control is synonym for eccentric muscle contraction. Maintaining is the key word for eccentric muscle contraction. Right? Knee, um, quadriceps are still working uh, eccentrically because if they don't work eccentrically, the patient will fall down. And dorsiflexors, what do you think muscle contraction for the dorsiflexors here? Concentric. Because the foot has gone into dorsiflexion, the dorsiflexors pulled the tibia forward over the foot. I do have a concept that will help you like zoom in, right? This is your talus and this is your tibia and fibula. So you see how talus is convex and tibia and fibula makes a concave um, joint space for talus. So when you go into the dorsiflexion, the tibia moves over the talus. This is the transition that you're looking at in the mid stance. Anterior translation of tibia is your dorsiflexion.